Hey students, welcome back. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to use P5 to make a simple animation like you see on the screen here. A circle moving back and forth on the screen and changing directions when it reaches either the right or the left side. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first thing you need to do is get a brand new P5 sketch started like you see I have here. Let's go ahead and rename it. Call it Moving Circle. We're going to make the canvas 800 by 400. Let's go ahead and run it to see what we have. That looks good. Remember, as I shared in a previous lesson, I want you always to uh, go ahead and put a multi-line comment at the top of your uh, sketch. Put your name, the date, and you can put the name of the uh, program there as well. Okay, one of the things I want to teach you in this lesson is how to create random numbers. Random numbers are really handy in programming. And there's a function called the random function that creates random numbers quite easily. You can see here I type the function name random with parentheses and I put two arguments there. And this is the range, uh, the, the, uh, the range of numbers that can be created. So we'll create a number from 0 to 255. Now, in order to actually see this number that's being created here on line 11, we're going to have to out up, output it somewhere. So let's go console.log, which I taught you in a previous lesson. This outputs it to the console down below. And uh, there you go. Uh, now we should see down at the bottom, I'll open this up, that uh, inside the draw function uh, here, which again is happening every, refreshing every 30th of a second or so, I'm getting a new random number, and you can see what that number looks like. And, and we sh if we watched it long enough, we'll see it would never get less than zero and never greater than 255. Looks like it's working great. Now, what can I do with my random number now that I know how to create one? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to set the fill feature for our program. And we know that we can give three numbers to that um, fill command, like 255.00, and that will... Uh, uh, if we create a shape, that's going to fill it with the color red because uh, this is an RGB color. R uh, is for red, RGB. The second number is green, and the third number is for blue. Uh, let's just test this out. Let's just come down here and make a circle and make that circle at uh, 0 and 200 and give it a radius of 20. Now, if I play this, we can see, sure enough, I have a small 20 diameter circle here. Uh, if I move it over a little bit so I can see it better, you can see the circle there. And it's filled with red. And uh, I can change these numbers here and get various colors. However, what if I wanted to get a random color? Well, uh, instead of putting a hard-coded number here in these three places, I could put a random number between 0 and 255. Well, it just so happens we know how to do that. Let's replace that first 255 with random. 0, 255, close that parentheses, and do that for the second number here as well, random, parentheses, 0, 255, close that paren, and then for this last one here as well, random, parentheses, 0, 255. Now it's important that you note that I have the fill function, which goes from this parentheses all the way back to this first one here, and then inside of that, I have three more functions, random. And each of those functions have a set of parentheses with two numbers in them. And then in between each of those random function calls, I have a comma. So make sure you don't miss any commas or miss any parentheses. It's really important that you open and close each of those sets of parentheses. Now, if I uh, play this, hit the play button over and over again, and thereby refresh my program, you're going to see here I've got a different color in that circle every time because it's choosing a random color for the R, the G, and the B. Perfect. Just what I want. All right, let's get rid of this console.log thing because it's just putting numbers there in the console. I don't need that. All right, now we have a random fill for our circle. Okay, the next thing we're going to learn in this lesson is how to create and use variables. Let's put a comment here at the top of our program. We're always going to put our variables up at the top, at least for now. And what is a variable? A variable is a place in memory that you can assign a name, and then you can store a value in that place in memory, and the value can change throughout the 
running of the program. Okay, let's create a variable. Let's create a variable that will hold the value of the x location of the circle. Right now, here on line 16, we're telling the program to create a circle at x10 and y200. So instead of using a hard-coded number like this, the number 10, let's create a variable and let's call it circle x. Now, unfor unfortunately, you can't just uh, create a variable like that without using a special word var, V-A-R. In JavaScript, var stands for variable. And so we are telling the computer that we are declaring or creating a variable with the name circle x. So the computer will set aside a place in memory, calling it that, and now it's ready to hold a value. And so let's give it the value 10, just like we did there on line 16. We use the equal sign, but we don't say equals, we say gets. So var circle x gets 10. We say gets because this equal sign is it actually an assignment operator. It's assigning value to the variable circle x. Now, watch what happens. I can come down here and remove the 10 here, the first argument in the circle function, replacing it with circle x. And when I run and re rerun my program, we'll see that nothing has changed with the drawing here. In fact, I can come up here, change the value of circle x to 30, and now the circle will move over. If I change it to 200, the circle will move quite a bit further to the right. And so whatever value I put in circle x is going to change the value or location of the circle on the x-axis because I'm using that variable right down here in the circle function. Perfect. That's the way a variable is created using keyword bar and the way it's assigned a value and then how it's used in the program. Okay, at the beginning of this lesson, I said that we would actually get the circle to move across the screen. How is that going to happen? Inside the draw function, we can actually put code that will make the circle move. This is how you do it. We know that circle X controls the X location of the circle. And so what if we uh, change the value of circle X as the program progresses? We can do that like this. Circle X gets circle X plus one. And voila, look what happens. The circle begins to move across the screen. Now, whoop, it just continues to leave, goes off to the right, and continues to move off into virtual space. If I re, uh, refresh my program here, the circle will continue to move. It's moving kind of slow. Why don't we move it by five pixels? Every 30th of a second, which is how often draw is uh, the draw function is being uh, refreshed, the uh, circle, x value will increase by 5. And since we're using circle x for the drawing of a circle, the circle moves. Let's refresh. And we see what's happening there. Awesome. OK. So just like that, I have a very simple animation. Now, I see I have a problem here because the circle is moving off to the right side of the screen and leaving. What if I could make the circle, once it gets to the far right, return back towards the left? We're going to need our first if statement. We haven't really talked about this yet, but they're not too difficult to understand. We're going to put an if and then a space and a parentheses. Inside that parentheses, we're going to put a condition. And that condition has to be either true or false. And what we're going to say is if circle x is greater than some value, because we know circle x is getting bigger and bigger, and when it gets off to the far right side, um, and when it gets to the edge of the canvas, we want it to come back. Well, how big is the canvas? Well, if we look up here, we created the canvas to have a width of 800. So I could just type in 800 here, but there's actually a better way to do it because P5 knows what the width of the canvas is and it stores it in a variable called width. So I can just put that there and then no matter what the size of the canvas is, it will always work. So I can say if circle X is greater than width, then I want something to happen. I need to place a curly curly brace here and then hit enter and it will also add a closing curly brace. And um, what I want to have happen, if the circle X becomes greater than the width of the canvas, I want the circle to start going back the other direction. But how will I do it? Well, I'm adding five to circle X here. What if I said circle X 
gets circle x minus 5. That should make it go in the opposite direction, right? And we'll see here, oops, it gets to the far side and it just stops. See, the reason this won't work is because it will, once it gets to the width, it will start to move back towards the left. But as soon as it does that, it will no longer be greater than the width because we just moved it the other direction. And so it will actually start moving back to the right again, following this command. And then as soon as it gets to the width, it will move back and basically it just gets stuck because it, uh, it's kind of moving back and forth right there at the edge. It's happening so quick we can't see it. So this right here is not going to work. So what we need to do is instead of using hard-coded values here, like plus 5 and minus 5, we need another variable. I'm going to suggest we come up here to the top, line 8, and say var, how about x speed? We're going to create a variable called x speed, and let's see, we've been using 5, so why don't we just give x speed the value of 5? And then, instead of coming down here and using this, why don't we say circle x get circle x plus x speed. And now, instead of using a hard-coded value, we're going to use a variable. It's still not working, though. We're still getting our circle stuck over on the right-hand side. That's because I haven't changed this line of code yet. So we have to think through what we need to do. Instead of trying to force the circle to go to the other direction, we just need to change the value of x speed. So what we can do is say x speed gets, and again, you might think, I'll put negative 5 in there. Well, that won't really work. The, instead, what we can do is um, just negate the value that's in x speed by saying x speed gets negative x speed. So whatever the value is, we can just negate it. And the reason we have to do that is because when it's negative and going in the left-hand direction, if it's going negative, if we negate it again, it'll become positive. So let's refresh this. We'll see it works great. Ball gets to the right, reverses speed, goes back the other direction. Oops, what happened? Got to the far left and it just disappeared. Well, that's because we only have one if statement. We're asking if the circle gets to the far right, re reverse x speed. So we need another if statement. If circle x, hmm, what do I put there? Well, I know that the canvas goes from 0 to 800. So the far left side is 0. So I probably need to do something like this. If circle x is less than 0, which would be the left-hand side, then x speed, let's see, would get negative x speed again. Okay, so again, if it's going in a negative direction and I negate it again, it'll become positive. Let's watch. Perfect. It's working great. We now have a circle moving back and forth across the screen, right and left, when it reaches either the right or left-hand sides of the canvas. The uh, ball, the speed of the ball, which is controlled by x speed variable, is reversing, causing the ball to move the other direction. So just like that, we have a ball, a, a circle moving back and forth across the screen. Perfect. Okay, here's your challenge. You can see here I have a more advanced moving circle animation. And this is what I'd like you to try to do with your program. First of all, I want you to get the ball to move not only on the x-axis, but also on the y-axis, so that it's moving in uh, all four directions. You're going to need another variable for that. I might suggest you use circle y. Next, I'd like you to see if you can get the circle to not only bounce off the right and left, but also off the top and the bottom edges of the canvas. A hint for that is you're going to need two more if statements to make that work. And thirdly, I'd like you to see if you can figure out how to count bounces. You can see here I've got a number in the middle of the canvas that keeps going up by one every time the circle touches and bounces off one of the four edges of the canvas. So you're going to need a variable that will hold the value of the number of bounces, and that variable will have to go up by one every time the ball touches one of the edges of the canvas. And then you're going to have to use the fill text or text uh, command to print that variable bounces uh, on the screen right there in the middle. 
Okay, so that's some hints on how to complete this challenge to get your animation to look like the one you see on the screen. Good luck. Can't wait to see your work.